Hi, I'm David Robson, and this is a video on floating. And I'm joined by Yelena. She's going to help me out today. Um, and we're going to look at floating vinyasas. So floating uh, is actually, I believe, more of a quality that we bring through our practice, through focusing on breath and making the movement follow the breath and the vinyasa is a straight line. And I've talked about that more in the two previous videos, uh, moving breathing system and straight lines. But usually we can really notice the floating or appreciate it when we watch people do stuff that's difficult and it looks easy. That's, that's kind of the idea of grace, right? We see, you know, grace under pressure when something is, we know is hard looks uh, effortless. And when you watch somebody that can really float in Surya Namaskara or in um, the jump back and jump through vinyasas, you, you can really appreciate that floating quality, you know, the, the, uh, the fact that they can make it look so easy. I, I know from my experience it's, it's not actually ever easy, but um, there are ways you can make it look easy. So this video is going to be all about that action of lifting up and coming down in Surya Namaskar, the lift up and jump back to Chaturanga Dandasana. And then we'll also talk about jumping forward to, um, to Uttanasana. And um, we're going to uh, do a bunch of different exercises uh, to, to get ready for it. Be great if you had maybe a friend, if you could trick somebody into uh, doing this with you. Um, but you could also use a wall for some of this stuff. So I'm going to be yelling as wall uh, as we go through it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to try to do, maybe we should look first at the action that we're going to do. So we'll get Yelena to demonstrate a floating jump back and a jump forward. I'll count her through the Surya Namaskar Vinyasa. So, standing in Samastiti, Yikam, inhale. Dwe, exhale, hands to the floor. Trini, inhale, your head up. And then Chitwari, exhale, you float up and lower down with control, Chaturanga. Pancha, inhale, upward dog. Shat, exhale, downward dog. And then usually we take five breaths here. And then next inhale, she's going to go sapta, inhale and jump. Feet to the hands, head up. Ashtao, exhale, you fold. Nava, inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, samastiti. Good. So like I said, we already talked about um, how to make all of those movements a little more floaty or graceful by um, following the two rules of movement follows breath and vinyasa is a straight line. But let's look at now at that specific Chitwari jump back, the lift and landing in Chaturanga Dandasana. And these are going to be, uh, we'll, we'll do it on the floor here. So these are going to be um, little moments of arm balancing. So let's go over alignment for handstands for arms. Okay, they're like little mini handstands. So uh, you're going to need to bring your hands shoulder width apart, your own shoulder width, and the creases of the wrists should be parallel to the front line of your mat. And, you know, don't, don't judge your hands by your fingers because everyone's fingers are crazy. They all point in all sorts of different directions. So look at your wrists and find that straight line and then check, is it comfortable? If it's not comfortable, you might need to adjust your hands a little bit more, but find when you bring your weight forward that there's no pressure in the wrist. They feel good. Okay. And then spread your fingers, not too wide, but comfortably, and then press the tips of the fingers and the tips of the thumbs into the floor. You could even drag your thumbs in towards your index fingers to strengthen your arms a bit, to strengthen the hands. And we, uh, we want to get all of the knuckles of the hands down on the floor. So you might notice that the index knuckle, this knuckle of your hand, is light. Often it is. It's hard to press that one down into the floor. So we're going to inwardly rotate the arms turn the inner elbow joints in towards each other so that you can feel more weight bearing down through the index knuckle. Okay? 
And then I really want you to push into the index knuckle and straighten your arms completely so that you can feel the triceps, the muscles on the upper outer arm begin to engage. Now look what happens though when you internally rotate your arms. The shoulders come forward, so roll them out again, Yelena. See the shoulders go back, and then when she spins the arms in, the shoulders climb towards the ears. Well, we don't want to do a jump back with our shoulders up by the ears. So we're going to keep pushing down through the index knuckles of the hands, and then push the shoulders back away from the ears. Okay, so it's important that you're not just shrugging your shoulders back, that you're pushing the shoulders away from the ears through the hands. Okay, and when you do that, you should feel your pec and your lat begin to engage. It's almost like the feeling of squeezing the upper arm or the armpit in towards the side body. Good. Okay. So you got that. Hands shoulder width. Spin the arms in. Press through the index knuckles. Shoulders back. Let's look at yelling to do it in a plank position for a second. Good. So this is a nice plank. She's got a good straight line and obviously she's strong. The index knuckles are on the floor and the shoulders are back from the ears. And this would make a nice picture because her back is good and flat. But what I want is more strength here. And this is going to seem a little bit of a funny shape at first. But right now, even though her shoulders are strong, she's not as strong as she could be here in the middle back. I want to try to access all of this strength in the upper back. So, Yelena, push down through the index knuckles, push your shoulders away from the ears, and then push your chest away from the floor, round your upper back. Good. So now she's getting this dome shape here in the upper back by pushing the chest away from the floor. Keep the hips low. You can feel your belly is starting to get active as well. This is the shape, this round upper back, that we're going to need for floating. It's a little counterintuitive. You want to get a round back. But remember, it's just going to be for a second as we lift up and forward. So maybe if you have your friend or some heavy furniture or something, you could get someone to put it on your back and test your strength here. If it's really strong, you should be able to <laughs> jump up and down. OK. OK, so this is the foundation for the shoulders. Now what we need to do is attach the lower body to that strength of the upper body. And uh, you have to use some psychic glue for this. You have to uh, imagine that you're gluing your thighs to your body. It's kind of a, a, a trick sometimes. People have trouble doing it. So you're going to come into a standing forward bend now. And try to get your ribs, your lowest ribs especially, to touch your thighs. So you might need to bend the knees to make that happen because uh, sometimes the tension in the hamstrings or the back makes it difficult to get the body close to the legs. If you've got long hamstrings or short legs, you might be able to get your body right up against your legs with your legs straight. And then I want you to keep the ribs and the thighs together, but straighten your arms. This is the tricky part. Okay, so do you see now Yelena's arms are straight, but the ribs and the thighs are still connected together. And now I want to uh, lean the weight forward into the hands and round the upper back. Good. This is the tricky part now, is she's going to jump, but she's going to keep the legs and the body together. So we're using the strength of the legs to jump, but we don't want to jump the legs away from the body. We want to try to keep the legs and the body together when we jump. The fear here is always that you're going to tip over when you jump. You'll, you know, fall on your face, smash your face. So a couple tips is to keep your chin lifted and your gaze a little bit forward, maybe um, a foot in front or a foot and a half in front on the floor, and really use your fingertips. Press them into the floor to help stop your momentum from carrying you over, okay? Okay, so spin the arms in, press the shoulders back, round the upper back, keep your chin up, inhale, and it's on the exhale you're going to jump. Watch, I'm going to put my hand above her shoulder. She's going to try to jump towards my hand here. Exhale, jump. Good. Inhale, exhale, jump. And since we're going to do this exhale, chitwadi, jump back, you want to start rehearsing the correct breath with the movement. So it's an inhale, prepare, round back. Exhale, jump. Keep the legs close to the body. 
Inhale, exhale, jump. Good. So make sure that you're not doing a donkey kick. And by donkey kick, I mean swinging your legs up and flying your into an arch position. So can you demonstrate that? Don't do this. Okay, that's a, a sure way to go over and you lose control. You're losing the strength in the upper body. Right now, I want you to try to hold the round back and the contraction of the body and the ribs together. If you want to work on this, um, you could bring your back over against a wall. And so if someone uh, was standing behind you, or if your back is to the wall, you, you're going to feel safer about it, where I want you to lean forward into the hands, come on to the tiptoes like that, and practice just doing little hops into the weight of your hands, just like that. And so the walls behind you, if you need it, if you were to fall over, it'll stop you, or your friend could be here to stop you. And this way, through repetition and breath, you're going to start to get more comfortable going into that, that space that, you know, understandably is a little bit scary at first. Okay, so you need to get all of your weight into your hands for the next part to happen. That's what we're doing there, was we're jumping all the weight into the hands and holding the balance even just for a split second. And then from there, we're going to lower down with control. And this is where you can really tell if it's floating. Because floating isn't really about going up, even though that sounds, we think, floating up. It's about how you come down, right? You know, a ball, if you throw it, is sort of floating for half of the distance, and then it's falling for the other half, right? So if it was floating, it would just land really gently. So we want to see uh, Yelena land really gently, and it's going to require her to start to shift weight forward as she extends the legs back. Um, if you watch the setup, can you get into the position again one more time? When her hands are down right now, as she shifts the weight forward on straight arms, all her balance is right here. The center of balance is between the hands. And so she's lifting by leaning her weight forward to get the feet to come up. If she doesn't bring weight forward, then all the weight is back here. It's going to be very hard to, to lift the legs. So as long as the weight stays balanced between the hands, then she's in control as she descends. So we want to try to keep the center of balance between the hands as we lower down. Uh, let's, uh, let's try this trick now. So come into a squat position here. Yeah, hands straight, arms straight, good. And then come on to your tiptoes, good. So let's say on the one, on the inhale, she's going to uh, get ready and lean forward, and then exhale, she's going to come up, and then start to bend the elbows as the legs come back. Good, let's try that again. So watch the timing of this movement. She's going to inhale, lean forward, and set up, and then exhale up and bend the elbows as the legs go back. So if we were thinking about um, timing the movement to the breath, she would go inhale, set up, and then exhale up, bend the elbows, and slowly lower. This is a, you know, obviously very difficult to do, uh, with control. So you might not be able to lower down totally slowly into chaturanga over the course of the whole breath. What I would recommend is trying to get that moment of air, that little bit of a lift, and then land in somewhere between plank and chaturanga. Don't land in plank with your arms totally straight because it won't feel great on your back or your arms. But if you bend your elbows a little bit, you'll start to be able to shift weight forward so you'll land somewhere closer to chaturanga, and then you use the rest of the exhalation to lower down. You want to try? Okay, so we'll go inhale, two, three, four, onto the toes, exhale, up, bend the elbows, two, three, four. And you see, the way that she's lowering down, nice and slowly like that, is building strength. And the strength that she's building with her feet on the floor in Chitwari, in Chaturanga Dandasana, is going to help her more with the lift in the floating at the very beginning, too. Okay, so let's try again. 
You can try it along at home if you want. You're going to straighten your arms, round the upper back, spin the arms in, shift your weight forward. You can even lift the heels, finish your inhale, and then on your exhale, jump, bend the elbows, and slowly lower. So the trick is to bend the elbows in the air. A little bit scary. <laughs> okay. And then once we're uh, back and we do upward dog, downward dog, we're going to end in a downward dog jumping forward to Uttanasana, to the forward bend, Sapta. So let's look at that a little bit. Come into downward dog. Now uh, let's look at the movement the way that we want it to end up. So she's going to, all on the inhale, bend the knees and then jump. And with control, bring the feet down and head up. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of control in the movement. She's not just jumping up and landing heavy. And that requires her to consistently push through the hands into the floor. Okay, so let's see, uh, let's see a good exercise for this now. If she's pushing down into the index knuckles, pressing her weight back, when she jumps, I want her to inhale, jump, and then push the feet back again to downward dog. So watch, inhale, up, and then jump. That's it, good. Inhale, jump, and push, push through the hands. Good. One more time, inhale, jump, and push the weight back. So you're going to feel when you do that that your fingers and your arms, your shoulders, really have to work to shift the weight back. You want to continue that work as you bring your legs into your body. So even though you're bringing your feet forward to the hands, you don't want to feel like your hands ever stop pushing into the ground. So let's try it again. This time, try to bring your legs into your body and then shoot them back again to downward dog. Good, so bend the knees on the inhale, you jump, and then shoot the legs back. Good, inhale, jump, good. One more time, bring the knees right into the body. Good, and go back. Good, can you see it? So she's catching that little moment again of balance that we had when we were lifting here at the beginning. And then she's holding the legs into the chest, arms here. Now to come down, she's gonna straighten the legs towards the floor, but keep pushing into the hands. So you don't stop pushing into the hands as the feet come down. Okay, one more time. So this time she's gonna jump, do the squat, and then lower the feet to the floor. Okay, so inhale, bend the knees and jump. Good, and then keep pushing. Good, okay, try again. Good, bend the knees and inhale, jump. Good. Good, one more time. And inhale, jump. Good. You can do it a little more gracefully than her if you keep practicing. She's a little clumsy. Okay, so these are some tips and ideas around doing the jumping back and jumping forward movement of floating. And of course, when you're doing it, you need to integrate those two other rules, making the vinyasas a straight line and making the movement follow the breath. So each of the vinyasas should last for the duration of the breath. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much, Yelena.